All right, gang, I am uh, off to the cinema on this nice and mild Thursday afternoon to go check out Assassin's Creed. We are assassins. <laughs> Just like saying the title Assassin's Creed. I'm gonna have to preface this review by stating that you know I'm not one of those uh, highbrow and pompous intellectual film critics that couldn't possibly reduce himself to consider video games an art form because that would be so undignified. Anyone that knows me knows that I am both passionate about the movies and I'm equally passionate about video games. I should also probably preface this review by saying that I'm, you know, I'm generally I've liked a lot of uh, Ubisoft games. U Ubisoft were of course the creators of the Assassin's Creed video game series. I've never played an Assassin's Creed game from beginning to end, so I guess you could kind of say I'm an Assassin's Creed virgin. Uh, so nevertheless, I, I'm familiar with the world, but I'm not entirely an expert on the world. So I'm kind of going into this film as a slight outsider. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing Assassin's Creed, mostly because I'm a huge fan of the cast, I'm a big fan of the director. Most importantly, the video game to movie adaptation genre over the last 25, 30 years has been filled with many stellar and superlative films. <laughs> A call for help has gone out. Game time. They're brothers. They're plumbers. Ah! Hold on. Not you. Leaky. Ah! And I'm going to kick that son of a bitch bison's ass so hard that the next bison wannabe is gonna feel it. It has begun! <laughs> and who wants to go with me? <laughs> Shit. Alright gang, I just got out of Assassin's Creed. Now for those who are really kind of unfamiliar with the fairly nifty premise of this movie and the video game series that preceded it, think of Assassin's Creed as sort of like a little bit of Quantum Leap. Cross morphed with the Matrix Whoa. with a dash of the Spanish Inquisition thrown in for good measure. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! Uh, Michael Fassbender plays this convict who is on death row and he is basically executed via lethal injection. And so I know what you're thinking. That's it. End of story. Movie over. <laughs> No. You're here to save my soul. I understand it's your birthday. <laughs> yeah. The party's just getting started. He basically is rejuvenated, so to speak, by this corporation that wants to use him via this piece of technology that allows for him to essentially time travel and inhabit the memories and the experiences of a distant relative of his in the late 15th century during the Spanish Inquisition. It appears that Michael Fassbender has a genetic link to his very, very distant ancestor that holds the key to the MacGuffin that the corporation is looking out for. We've traced his bloodline back 500 years to the Assassin's Creed. You're about to enter the Animus. What you see, hear, and feel are the memories of your ancestor, who's been dead for 500 years. Wait a minute! 
This MacGuffin in question is the Apple of Eden. Yes, that Eden. Apple of Eden. With it, any impulse towards independence or rebellion will be crushed. Which they believe holds the key to deciphering the mystery that is mankind's free will, which this corporation hopes will somehow eradicate violence. It's kind of like an obsession. It's kind of nonsensical hooey, if you ask me. You give them the apple, and they win. The Templars will use it to destroy us. Nevertheless, uh, Fassbender's character uh, makes frequent trips back in time, so to speak, inhabits the body, mind, and spirit of his ancestor in hopes of acquiring the Apple of Eden for this corporation. Welcome to the Spanish Inquisition. Um, complications ensue. Assassin's Creed, on a big positive, is an absolute technical marvel. This film is really a masterpiece of like production design and art direction and costume design and visual effects. Uh, the film's director is Justin Kurzel. If you're not familiar with Justin Kurzel's work, he previously directed one of the uh, greatest Shakespearean adaptations of recent memory in Macbeth, which also starred Michael Fassbender and Marianne Coutillard. Coutillard also appears in Assassin's Creed. I'm Dr. Sophia Riken. I'm here to help you. And the one thing that I took away from Macbeth is that Kurzel really just has this painterly eye for visuals. That was one of the most sumptuously beautiful films that I saw last year. And I'm telling you, his technical prowess really carries forward into Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I believe you are destined for great things. Let's find out. Um, this film is just endlessly engaging to look at. I mean, there is, you know, visual opulence on display in this film. It's, it's, it's really just a, a film that you can fully immerse yourself in uh, on a level of its imagery and its visual. What I saw in there. It felt real. It was. I really like what Kurzel does uh, with the scenes that take place um, in 15th century Spain. Also interesting is the fact that all the characters speak their native period language in these scenes, and it's all done with subtitles, so I really liked uh, that aspect of the film. Assassin's Creed, if anything, is uh, a bravura showcase of filmmaking craft without any question. This film is so wondrous to look at and inspires legitimate awe and wonder in its sights. But it bored me to death. <laughs> it just, it, it's a very tedious film. There is no one to really latch onto or care about or develop a rooting interest for. Who are you, people? We know everything about you, Cal. And as a result, you don't find yourself. Um, really relating to any of the characters or caring if they achieve their ultimate endgame. And this also has the negative side effect of rendering actors of the caliber of Michael Fassbender and Marianne Coutillard and Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons also shows up in this film. Uh, they're kind of neutered. Like, I, I don't think this film makes strong usage of their thespian talents, at least the, in manners that I was hoping it would. We've been looking for something. And we need you to get it for us. Fassbender himself is one of the most intense and electrifying and charismatic of performers and... <laughs> the character uh, doesn't offer him much of a performance challenge here. And his character on paper is sort of underwritten and it's only really until late in the movie that he... you sort of learn a little bit more about his backstory, but it's almost too little too late. The other little problem, too, is that Assassin's Creed takes itself as seriously as a heart attack. No problem, just having a heart attack. Well, it's just, you know, considering sort of the preposterousness of its overall premise, <laughs> and its fantastical premise at that, it, it, there could have been a little bit of an injection of humor in the film. Um, and <laughs> 
think the film also sort of loses its way in the third act and it involves uh, certain characters making decisions that don't particularly make much sense logically. We're watching you, waiting to see who you are. Trust me, this is and it kind of culminates in a finality that goes completely out of its way to set up a sequel that if this film is not successful and makes money, we'll probably never see. <laughs> That's one of my biggest pet peeves with so many franchise introductory installments is that instead of making a really good solid film with a big definitive beginning, middle, and end, they're more worried about A, exposition, and B, uh, concluding the film with a definitive notion that yes, we're gonna have a sequel. It's like focus on the film and the narrative and the story at hand first. Worry about the sequel later. Like ultimately, I found myself very, uh, cold and detached from this film. I, I, I wanted it to I wanted to feel warm and welcomed into the atmosphere and the universe of Assassin's Creed. Um, and it seems like there was so much painstaking detail and work and effort that was put into making this one of the best looking video game to movie adaptations ever made. But again, if you're comparing this relative to the curve of previous video game to movie adaptations, it has begun. That's not entirely saying a hell of a lot. Don't worry, this is not the savior of the video game to movie adaptation genre. God damn! And you know what? Considering the sheer enormity of the limitless talent, both in front of the camera and behind the camera. <laughs> I went into Assassin's Creed with incredibly lofty expectations and unfortunately I was let down. This is not a bad film, it's just sort of a lifeless and soulless one. So there you go, there is my review of Assassin's Creed. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the film. Also let me know in the comments below whether or not you saw Justin Kurzel's Macbeth and what you thought of that film. Also let me know uh, what some of your favorite Assassin's Creed games are. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you could like this video, I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you could subscribe to my channel, that would mean the world to me. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you at the movies. We work in the dark to serve the light. Holy shit, that's what film critics do. Am I right?